Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week I'm adding some washing or laundry lines to my tenements. These have been languishing on my layout for a while, and I've got plans for lighting, which will be coming up in a video at some point soon. But I've also wanted to put some details on, and the one thing I've always wanted to add were laundry or washing lines. They're really easy to do, and I've done clothing type things before, and beds and that, and they're just so easy to do, but they make such a difference, and they add a layer of detailing that's been missing. So what do you need to do to make your washing or laundry lines? Well, I'm gonna show you three different methods, and two are very similar. One's completely different. You can just buy your own laundry lines. Now, it may seem a bit of cheating, but if you've got a lot to do, it can be a real godsend, and all you have to do is paint these up. Um, I bought these in the US, they're definitely a US product. You may be able to get them in the UK or elsewhere in the world, but Bar Mills is a well-known um, model railway, model railroad company. So they make some really interesting stuff and these are etched brass. So all you have to do is spray and paint them. The other thing you can do is you can use either foil, one method, or tissue, another method, to make your laundry that you then hang on a wire. And for that, I like to use magnet wire. So you'll need some products to make it out of, some various things to attach them, like drills to make holes, tweezers, knives, brushes, paint, glue, and maybe some nippers for your wires. So that's what you're gonna need. The last thing I always have is, I've got four of myself, it's quite sad really, four mini Cathy's, and I've got them in various scales. And you can see, um, they're quite cute really well done. I got myself scanned at Worley last year and these are the result and they're absolutely beautiful. I do love them. So there they are and I like to have them out just to remind myself how big things are. I work in multiple scales and I sometimes do things too large because I've got used to a larger scale or sometimes a little small because I've got used to a smaller scale and I find it useful to just have a person there so I can go oh actually that's how big a sheet would be. That's how big a shirt would be. So there we go my people so first off, I'm just going to tidy this up because I need to go and spray paint it with some primer before I go off for lunch. All details of what the materials and tools I use are down below in the description, so you don't need to worry about it. It will be there. And you can just take it off its mounting board. So here, um, to take them off, I do just use a knife and you can just cut these little etched sprues off. Oops. Being very careful not to cut your washing lines. But for painting, it's as easy to leave it on this sprue as anything else. So I'm gonna leave it on the sprue and that'll make things a lot simpler. Now you can see there's little knobs. So you can, nubs even, you can just perhaps switch some of them down a bit. But otherwise, files needed. So these are just a set of needle files and you just need to go through and holding them so you don't bend them, just go and quickly clean off any nubs. Since I bought a 3D printer, I have gone through so much isopropyl alcohol, it's unreal. But it's incredibly useful stuff because it cuts through grease. And I can see my finger marks on this brass now. And obviously etched brass, I now need to spray paint it. And those finger marks, the grease could stop the paint from sticking. So although I'm gonna go and use an automotive primer in the garage, and don't do it in my kitchen for obvious reasons, um, and it also stinks the house out. Um, I'm just gonna first wipe these with isopropyl alcohol to just get rid of any sort of um, fingers, grease, anything else. And I'm gonna do it both sides. So just to make sure that it's got something to stick to. There we go. Now that won't take long to dry and I'm gonna go and spray them with Halford's Car Grey Automotive Primer. Sticks to most things really well. It's quite cheap-ish for a paint and it's a lacquer um, cellulose base, so it sticks really well. It cuts through a lot of things. So now we're on to the tissue paper ones. Really exciting, because you can create your own. The only thing is you need a sharp blade or you're just gonna tear your tissue, and I'm just gonna cut a piece off and use that. Um, it has to be the right kind of tissue. This is quite firm. I think it came in a box or something, um, packing something, or maybe I even bought this one because it's so much of it. But it's important that it doesn't disappear completely when it's wet because you won't be able to paint it or mold it. So now we need to think about what we need. So I've got my person who's here and I'm going to cut out some bed sheets which I'm going to make sure are square by cutting them over this. 
and you see you do need a sharp blade or you won't cut through the tissue without tearing. So now I've got to produce some shirts and trousers and things and they're a little bit harder. Now these don't have to be fully 3D, you know, you're just going to hang them on and they're going to be painted. So you don't need to make them um, two-sided or anything, just enough to represent it. And this is actually, well, it's kind of behind you as you come up into my layout. So it's not an area people look at when they first come in. It tends to be an area they look at more when they're leaving. Um, but there we go. By then they've already made up their mind about my layout. You could do a lot of time doing this and make it look really accurate. You could even cut out little mini patterns if you wanted. I'm personally going with the effect because they're going to be draped and hanging rather than the actual um, scale looks perfect spot on. So it's up to you. They didn't wash any knickers or socks this time. They're a little small to do. So this is my tissue cut out, but what we need to do now is make them look a little bit more real. It's an easy way to do that. But first I need to make waterproof underneath so I can just peel them off later and I'm going to use foil for that. So now what I want to do is make them look like they're blowing a little in the wind. So for that I'm going to use a little bit of white glue mixed with water. About a third white glue, two thirds water and I've shaken it in this bottle. And I use it for gluing all my scenery so it's just my standard mix, it's nothing special. You can see it's used a lot. And I'm just going to put some of that down there. And I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to start making these look like they're blowing and you can just get them all nice and wet and it gives them a bit of stiffness you're putting a bit of glue in there which helps and they should peel off here later okay now once you put the glue on this you cannot really touch them because they will just disintegrate so you could use a sort of a tougher version perhaps so you want to start wrinkling them as much as you can before you get them on and try not to leave too much sort of sitting around the edge but all right gonna leave those to dry now, if you can't be fat with the tissue, or you're finding it just it gets stuck and you can't get it off and you're not having a happy day, foil. You can just do the same with foil. Well, these all dried off nicely over lunch. So next up is painting. Now, I could prime these, but they're quite fiddly and small. So I'm just gonna paint them straight with acrylic paint. Now I know you've all got better things to do than watch me paint for an hour. So paint one side, let it dry, paint it again. So you've got two coats. Um, on the brass, you can be a little bit more delicate. On the rest, just slap it on. Turn it over. Be very careful not to get the paint underneath. Otherwise, it will stick better to the paint than it will to the foil and you won't get it off. And your paint will come off and you'll have to touch it up. So paint again, one coat. Paint again, another coat. So now you've got four coats, two on each side. I did mostly white, because that's what the photos look like, the old black, and a couple of bits of pink, just for excitement. So once everything's dry and you've patched up any bits that have come off, I do recommend patching up again at the end with a little bit of paint, because as you flex things and you might knock them. We're now onto the exciting bit. Yes, we're finally hanging our laundry onto lines. And for that, I use my all time favorite magnet wire, which is a bendable copper wire with a nice enamel cover on top. Now I learned a really exciting tip earlier in this year. If you want super glue to stick when you put it in, rather than holding the two parts and then using the zapper, you spray one part with the um, accelerator kicker zapper, whatever you want to call it, and then you push the other part against it. Instant grip. And that's what I've used here. Just one thing to think about, and that's how you actually hang your washing on the line. I did mine with all the straps at the top on the vest, and afterwards I thought, actually, I'd probably hang them with the thin one layer at the bottom. So it's something I might change the next time I do them. The other thing is I've hung all the sheets together because normally you'd put all sheets in together in a wash and you wouldn't mix them in with other clothes. And I've also measured each line so it hits exactly in the stairwell of my telement, which is where these are going to fit in a minute. Whoa, there we go. Wow. Well, I think I've had enough washing for one day. I'm going to take a break and I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to install them all into my terraces or tenements, whatever you want to call them. Well, they've been drying overnight. All I need to do now is touch them up and bend them and actually paint those copper wires. Could have painted them before, chose to paint them afterwards. So I'm going to use, this is actually Tamiya wooden deck can, which is just a favourite colour I use whenever I want something that's slightly brown. And I think that um, rope is normally 
slightly brown there. Oops. Some of these are just sticking a bit. So I just want to run it along and touch any bits that are going to be seen. Now, bearing in mind, this isn't going to be seen from the back, particularly this one. I just need to make sure that I catch any bits of copper. Now, whilst I'm doing this, I'll just talk a little bit about what I've been looking at um, for research. So I always like to look at real pictures of whatever it is that I'm modelling. And in this instance, I was looking at Shawpee, which is a great site for old fashioned photos. And it's got some lovely ones that were partly the inspiration for all of this of tenements in the 1900s, which obviously about 50 years earlier than my model. But we've loads and loads of washing lines out. And a note that they do all go from one end of a block to another block or to a sort of courtyard in the middle. They don't do across the stairwells like mine is about to do, but that's the only place I can fit it on my tenement. So I'm going to take a little bit of poetic license, which I'm sure you'll forgive me for, um, to make these look um, as real as possible without actually being um, like the photos of the 1900s. Well, I test fit one to see, and I'm quite pleased that I've come out. So I'm going to keep on adding them in now. I've got to say, um, I'm using a drill like this, and I think this is a 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 mil drill bit, so that I've got a fine hole for them to mount into, because you need them to mount into it. You'll never glue onto a vertical wall and get it to stick. But my problem is that um, I'm, I'm kind of scuffing the wall a bit when I'm trying to do it, so it's quite hard. <laughs> I keep knocking everything. So I counted three bricks up above each of the barriers, and actually, I tried it with the drill on its own. <laughs> it's a real pain trying to record this and do the normal drill action. It's not that easy. And I found my drill was wandering quite a bit because I was trying not to get my other hand in the way. So actually, I took out a little divot with the point of an X-Acto blade, which I know is probably a really bad way of doing it, but it does work. And once I got that little divot, then my um, drill bit would stay in it and not wander down the wall, which made it a lot easier. So I just carried on doing that. Now, I poked the wire in and I've cut it longer. I did trim it, but I cut it longer than the width of the um, tenement gap. And that meant I could just poke my wire in. I didn't glue it except in one place where I trimmed it a little bit short, which was embarrassing. So a little dab of um, super glue on the back sorted that one out. But normally on this, I didn't bother. The downside was whenever I pushed these in, I hadn't waited very long and the paint was still tacky and I took a lot of the paint back off again with my um, tweezers as I was using them to try and guide the wire in. So a little bit more patience would have helped. Um, these laundry lines were too long, but I like them. So I'm going to use them in a different way on wooden poles. And for those, I'm going to use cocktail sticks because bear in mind, my person's only this tall. So a cocktail stick is probably quite a chunky post. So I can just snip off the ends, send that a little squarer, and make them both the same height. Cut my laundry lines off the etched brass frame with a sharp knife, drill a little hole to accept that line in the top of each of these, fiddly but worth it so that they stick in robustly. Add a dab of super glue to the end of my laundry line, then a dab of kicker, and it's all set and ready to go. I could just plant them in something like this polystyrene. Jobs are good. So all I need to do now is touch up and they're done. What I mean by that is I'm knocking some of the paint off, putting them into those little holes. So I'll go and add a little bit with a steady hand. And on these ones, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a wash on those very clean looking upright. Well, I'm not gonna call them cocktail sticks. Laundry line, poles, washing poles, whatever you call them. Probably best to do this beforehand because any glue that I've got on will just stain it. Oh, nice with that. Oh, gosh, I even got it on the washing. I won't be popular, will I? So here we are, the final result. My bare tenements have got some laundry. And it's quite interesting to see what a difference it makes. It's just one small thing in those many layers you need to build up, but it does make a difference. It makes these tenements look a little bit more lived in. Now I'm gonna say, before anybody comments, 
I know they wouldn't be flapping against those wood bits, but that's where I've ended up with putting them. And they probably end up a little bit dirtier, but you can see there's actually quite a wind going. They are flapping quite a bit, so it does look good. Um, of the three methods, I think the tissue method probably gives the best result. The foil method's simple, but you can't beat these brass ones for just ease. So a big thanks to all my Patreons who make videos like this possible by supporting me. If you're interested in doing that, then head over to patreon.com, Kathy Miller, and check me out. Otherwise, have a look at my website and all the details, materials that you might want are there and down below in the description. I hope you enjoyed this. As ever, put some comments below.